in uh, Design Engineering at Imperial College London. So I posted a video, um, I think it was about last year, yeah, around about this time last year, about why I chose Design Engineering at Imperial College. I've had about 500 odd views, but a lot of questions. So I felt like making another video today just to answer uh, some of the main questions that came up. I don't have them all in front of me, just from the top of my head, I'm going to try and think. Um, but before that, I just want to show you one of the really cool projects I'm working on right now, um, because it's still relevant to you. It's an outcome from all the things I actually learnt at uh, Design Engineering in the Dyson School or uh, Design Engineering at Imperial College London. Um, so here we go. This is, oops, there you go. That is the new really cool project that I'm working on. This is one of the initial prototypes. It's the first prototype, in fact and uh, it's designed to be ridden uh, with your belly forward. So you actually forwards your flats and you're facing front like that. And you kind of put your hands forward. So it's a completely new uh, design and invention, I would argue. I haven't seen something like this before really. Um, but yeah, I just want to show that to say, you know, what you, you know, I couldn't have made something like this by no means before design engineering. At Imperial, there's so many things that I had to learn. You know, even the fact that the big batteries that you often buy are actually comprised of small little cells like that. I didn't know that before design engineering at Imperial. Um, so it's just those little things that you'll pick up on. So even if you don't become a pro at absolutely everything they teach, these small things really help you to be open to like a vast array of more knowledge and information and the usage of that knowledge and information. Right, without further ado, I want to get into the questions that were so frequently asked to me. One was... Um, what's the process like? Like, what do they ask you? What kind of assessments do you have to pass as we actually get into this course? So after meeting the requirements of an A star AA or an, I think, uh, yeah, some people's uh, offers double A star A. Uh, so I'm going to start off with that question. The process was very, um, for me, it was quite chill. And what I mean by that is there was just an interview, uh, no exam, no extra examination or anything. And the interview was actually very chill. I really enjoyed it. Um, I had a lecturer called Nicholas Rogas. Um, he's a uh, yeah, he's a computer scientist, I think, and he also lectures. He gives us um, computing lectures in year two. A uh, really nice person, and um, yeah, it's just a really chill interview. So what I felt like with these interviews is they mainly kind of want to find out how you think. Obviously, I think you probably really have heard this before, but. They want to suss out how you think, if you'll be capable for the course, obviously. But much more than that, in the interview, I felt like the main thing that's trying to extract from you, understand about you, is are you someone who's teachable? Are you someone who they would enjoy working with? Are you interested in the course? And these are things that you can't always get directly from an examination or, um, or a personal statement, right? Like, perhaps a bit more of a personal statement. But specifically in, in the interview, because you're face-to-face, um, they can directly suss out uh, many of the things that they would want to know about you and your attitude towards a course and design engineering in general. So I had a question, for instance, just as an example question. Do you think people can express themselves through design? Do you think design can express emotions? Something along those lines. And I was like, yes, of course. So, they, so, so you kind of understand that the questions are related uh, to be able to understand your interest in design, engineering and um, Imperial College London. So that was another question that they asked me. Um, what do you think about Imperial? Like, why Imperial? You know? So you don't just want to say, well, it's top 10 university. Like, have your answers ready. Why Imperial? Tell me. Like, what What do you know about the lecturers? Show your interest. So that was, that was um, definitely something that was quite important. Uh, another question that I quite frequently had was, what courses must I do? What A-levels must I take? I'm taking this, this, this. Shall I drop this? Blah, blah, blah. So... Design engineering at Imperial is actually really, really cool. They don't want just specific type of people. They take a range of people. So even if you're doing art, they will recognize it. They will appreciate that because you have something to add to the cohort, you know? So even if you're doing, I say even if actually art is very relevant, but uh, say even if you're doing chemistry, right? It's still relevant. There will be a time that actually be relevant. Like batteries are full of chemicals. So, you know, um, they're all relevant but if I'm to make a kind of a list of like what's most important obviously I say maths because that is a requirement of the course within itself anyways 
And um, so if you had to choose, that's why I'm explaining this, uh, you wanna, you'd want to have maths. And you know, if you can choose, if you, ha you have the opportunity to do further maths, do it. Um, it, will put you, it will set you ahead, but I don't think it's a requirement of the course. Another thing that you can do is um, uh, you can do, um, sorry, <laughs> just blank then. Um, another thing that, yeah, the other thing that I'd say was really, really helpful for me is I did something like DT. So 3D design was the equivalent um, at my school. So it's a bit of naughty, but also very kind of hands-on A-level uh, back at uh, my college where I was doing A-levels in Brighton. So something where you actually get the experience of designing something, then even having kind of a bit of understanding of making it, whether it be 3D printing or the more traditional methods of, I don't know, wood, woodwork and whatever, like that I found was secondary. So primary, maths, that's actually, in fact, perhaps that, that, you know, it kind of competes with maths, but because maths is a requirement of the course, I put that even above that. Right, third one is I took physics and... Yeah, like, I, I don't think I'm actually in place to, to comment on other courses or what would be um, better uh, for your experience. But I do feel like physics would probably be uh, the next high high ranking one, because physics is basically um, you're learning like stuff like um, there, there was lots of actually content uh, that was very closely linked to physics that I learned in my physics class. Um, I can't really think of an example. Um, you know, like even the way that stars, the distance of stars is measured from the Earth, you know, like even that can be related to what you learn in design engineering at Imperial because like we were learning about how ultrasonic sensors work, for instance, and how they actually help. I don't, like that, that just came to my mind quickly, but I think there's much stronger links as well. Like forces, yeah, that would definitely be it. Forces, and if you're not taking mechanics, uh, maths, then that's uh, that's a very you got you, you know you're gonna learn a lot about forces in the mechanics modules. It's tough. <laughs> um, right, so that's that. Other than that, drawing, sketching, you know, these are all skills that you probably want to have that you want to get get good at, um, that you want to be prepared to get good at, good at at least. Uh, sketching, drawing, 3D printing, you know, these are all things that you really um, will be working on a lot. Mm. Yeah, and also, yeah, like, you want to come with being able to organise. Anyways, I'm talking too much. The other question, the other question that I got quite a lot of was um, social life. Ha, <laughs> social life. <laughs> social life. Ah, Imperial. It's possible, okay? You can have a social life. More than possible, especially on design engineering at Imperial, it's known to be one of the most sociable kind of cohorts, the most sociable department, right? So you've got people who um coming, they're very creative, anything. You know, I, I don't mean to be coursist, if that's even a word. You know, I don't mean to degrade any other course, but it's a preferred course, design engineering, particularly because of the social aspect. There's some events, you know, we do have events where we actually, uh, you know, that are designed to be able to socialise and network with people, um, where we have drinks, wine, stuff like that. Um, and we just get to chat, very chill and everything. Another good social aspect is we've got these communal areas where people can study. So that's very frequent. And they're nice places. They're not like a library. We have a library that's usually empty because most people are on level two where there's a microwave and stuff like that, you know, and where people can actually chat and the tables are big. So you've got big kind of square tables where people can actually chat with each other. Um, now, the, the main hindrance I found in my social life at Imperial College London, which I kind of regret allowing it to do so, but is the deadlines. It's not the time, okay? It's not about time, not having the time. You'll have time. You can make time if you wake up one hour earlier, right? You can make time... If you make up two hours earlier, you have time to even do exercise, right? So time isn't a big issue. But what I did find was stress and planning. So if you want to have a social life, you've got to plan yourself very well. So you've got to say, right, I've got to study from this time to this time. And then after that, I'm going to socialize. Because otherwise, if you procrastinate, you're leaving stuff to the last minute. In that time, you feel stressed, so you can't socialize. You need to be stress-free to socialize. Like otherwise, you're just like, mm, hello, uh, uh, you know, it's just really awkward. So, um, yeah, so you're feeling stressed for that because of that reason. And then towards the end, you really don't have time because you actually got to do the project. So towards the end of the deadline, 
that period when you give them an assignment. What does that mean? If it's up to you, that's what it means. You know, there's no such thing as, oh, I go to the Imperial Swim, I don't have a social life. No, you can do it if you want it. If you put the effort, definitely. But it is more challenging because you have to be more prepared. You have to plan better, um, which might not be something that you're used to from A-levels, or it might be, I don't know. But um, as long as you do that well, I have confidence that you, watching this video, will have a good social life, okay? Unlike me, who is a bit of a hermit. <laughs> no, not really. I have I, I, fairly good. I, I, I still got a few people whose names I've found out. No, I a bit more than that. Anyways, um, that was pretty much it. Please let me know if you still have any other questions, if you have anything else you want to ask or you want to um, just talk about even. You know, I'm here to, to also collaborate with people. I'm a, you know, I'm looking into getting into design even more and more and more and more. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite an open person, quite easygoing. So, like, um, yeah, and uh, please follow my Instagram. It's called swearing.ltv where I actually showcase a lot of my designs. Um, and soon I'll be having an online store as well where you'll actually have the chance to purchase things. Um, so that's swearing.ltv will be in the comment section below, well, in the bio place, you know, the description part. Um, yeah, where well, I actually show my vehicle there very frequently. Thank you for watching. Bye.